Ready? Oh, there you go. Pushy, pushy, call the meeting to order. We all stand for the Lord's Prayer. Oh. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy will be done, done on earth, earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Present. <coughs> Here. Mr. Garber. Here. Fellas, have you had an opportunity to review the minutes of April 16th, 2015, all 13 pages? Yeah, yeah. I have, sir, and I move a motion to be approved as presented. And I will second that. Pat. They will stand approved as presented. Thank you. Pat, what do you have for us? Is it good for what, 730? Yeah. But, um, I don't have a whole lot, just a couple things to, to tell you about. Um, Mel came over the other day and brought uh, several boxes of records over out of my office, over to here. I've got a lot more to go, but I've got, uh, what was it, seven or something like that? i seen that permitted load going down the road. I didn't know he was hauling stuff from Pat's house. <laughs> what are you doing with the extra room? <laughs> <laughs> trying to get in, trying to get in and out. I couldn't get in it before. <laughs> they were stacked in my bedroom. Uh, I did receive a letter from Phil Sales and Service regarding that they're no longer able to support the business at the voting precinct. Just how I, I thought I brought a copy tonight to read, but I, I just one of the things I didn't pick up. And then there's another thing that came from. Um, uh, do you want a copy of the effects of the Affordable Care Act on reimbursement of health insurance premiums? Prosecuting attorney uh, Heron sent us some information on that. I didn't copy it because I didn't know if you wanted it or not. But is that is that the same article that was in our uh, township? Meeting? You know, I didn't compare them. It was probably similar. Uh, it was probably I similar, I would think. Yeah. Because I, I found that in it didn't apply to us because we're not doing it. No. But it was interesting. Right. Right. Well, there's a lot of there's a lot of places that a lot of townships that do that, and yeah. it was really up right. in arms. Mm -hmm. right. I mean, as to what was right and wrong, and I mean, at least we don't have anybody that's going to affect. Right. Well, the federal government's giving mixed opinions depending upon the year. Oh. So now it's no. You just can't do well, it. Well, I'm glad we don't have to fuss about it because none mm -hmm. of us uh, are involved in that. So. And I was going to give you a copy of the Chip and Seal and Grove Reclaimer Schedule, which I did not pick up either, but I'm sure Mel can talk about that. If you want, to let you know when that is, because he does have a copy. I do have, I have the date wrote down here, Pat. The Reclaimer is uh, July 6th through July 10th. Move that, sorry. July 6th through the 10th, Carl. And then Chip and Seal would follow on July 27th through July 30th. 27th and 30th? Correct. That's from the county fair, isn't it? Just, yeah. just make it's it. It's a week, week four. The week four. <laughs> As long as everything stays on schedule, that's going to work good because I'm actually going to be on vacation the week before the reclaimer, and that'll be it'll work out really good. Hopefully, the weather will agree to it. Yeah. 
I, I don't have anything else. But thank you. Okay. Well, um, as far as what we've been up to, we finished running the rotary ditcher throughout the entire township, as well as cleaning some other ditches with the backhoe. Um, we've installed several culverts at various locations. Some of the ones that we had commits for, some were just some rusted out mm -hmm. ones. Um, we hauled in approximately 300 tons of 57 limestone from East Fairfield that's needed for the reclaiming program. Uh, we started working on pulling the high berms off the roads that are going to be chipped and sealed and reclaimed. We have Kelly Park done from Fairfield to 164. Uh, we did the necessary preparations and cleanup for election day. Election day. Uh, once again, the ladies were very happy with everything here. <coughs> and one gentleman. And one gentleman. We did the May sign inspection, and we had the tire drop off today. Uh, we collected 300 tires today. Whoa. Yeah. Up. Oh, we lost them last year. Yeah, we were about 200 last year, and uh, we probably had 30 that we picked up through the season from like last year to this year. So we had about 330 to haul in. Uh, actually, we had about. 120 in the first 45 minutes. I mean, it, right at noon, it was just boom, 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 boom. One right after another. Do you think it made a difference that we advertised it later, published it later? I wonder, because I, we really had a good turnout today. Because I, I just put that in on Tuesday. I, see that. I just wondered if that make a difference, because usually we did it ahead. When you, when you approved mm -hmm. it, I put it in. Mm -hmm. Well, it wasn't in the community calendar. It kind of stuck out more a little bit before it was in the paper, so. I asked yeah, you to put it in as a news item. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's, yeah, it, it stood out a little bit more. Yeah. Did you know most of the people that were dropping them off? A good bit of them, yeah. Yeah, yeah almost everybody, really. You know, maybe a few here and there, we didn't. Like I said, that was from noon to quarter till one, we had 120. I mean, it was wow. busy right there. Maybe. Yeah. 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 As fast as we could get them on board. Well, that's better than you folks picking them up. It's better than having to dig them off the hillside or get them out of the ditch somewhere. So. And okay, on uh, April 21st, I met with Mike Mangine from State Line Paving about the repairs to be made to uh, Woodville. Uh, him and I walked it and painted out the areas that were damaged during the you know, construction of the pad and the drilling. And there was also a spot on Lower Elkton we looked at. Um, he thought that they would get to it sometime in between when the rig left and before they fracked it. So that could be any time now. Uh, I did see that they were working on the overpass today on 558. They had to redo that pavement at the overpass. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's the point I was talking about. Mm -hmm. yeah. That job. So I don't know. You would, I would think while they were there, they would cause come down and do that intersection and fix the spots we talked about. Bro. I don't know if that will happen. But How do you spell that Mangini or whatever? Mangine. M-A-N-G-I-N-E. And he's with what? State line paving. Okay. I see the areas that you had work. Well, yeah. we were okay with all of the markings that we had and there was no <coughs> question they're, they're going to do those repairs. Okay. Yeah. Uh, him and I walked it, and he right. worked them all out, and then he was going to get the quantities and give them to uh, Hillcorp. Okay. But he said he didn't see any problem with it. So, so it's Hillcorp's expense. Yes. Yeah, because I'd seen he had them all worked out. I was just kind of curious of how that conversation went with them, and I haven't heard anything. So. Yeah, I didn't hear anything from BJ that, you know, too much or you know, nothing like that. I mean, it might seem to think that it would be no problem. So I'm waiting to hear from that. All the, the only thing I would have to add to that is that Steve Burgess came and met me here today to pick up those uh, ROWs that we signed at the last meeting. And he heard that, the, I mean, you hear a lot of things, but he heard that the fracking date got moved way up. That they were talking about the end of July, 1st of August. He said he heard now it's going to be the 1st of June. So, mm -hmm. so I don't, we'll see what happens with that. 
And then on uh, April 27th, I received an email that we were approved for our signage grant through ODOT. Mm -hmm. um, for, and that was going to be for fiscal year 2006, which starts on July 16th. Yeah, that's it, 2006. Yeah. 2006, yeah. 2006 yeah. I know. Going back in time. <laughs> Uh, 2016, which starts uh, July 1st of this oh. year, uh, 15. So the email read that once um, they got closer to this date, they would be in touch with me to complete the necessary paperwork. <coughs> what was the amount? Mm. I don't know if I have that. What was that amount, Barry? 37. What do I need special for that? Do you know? Well, oh no, all I have is that uh, she's going to be in contact with me when I when get closer to that day. <coughs> it's 7 1 of this year. Yeah. If, and she said if I, the email said if I had any questions, we could call her. That's why you'll be calling, isn't it? Well, that that date, but I mean that's just when the fiscal year starts. Oh, okay. Oh, there's something waiting for that. So the fiscal 16 year starts July of this year. Correct. Okay. I'll copy. I'll make you a copy of that email. Okay. And do we have a timeline that we have to install? We have one, one year. year. One year. Yeah. Okay. And you, do we buy from them the materials from them? No, they'll come right here. The materials will be delivered to you. And we have they'll, no ship, they'll ship the whole order here. here. But we don't get involved in the money other than the... There was just that one paper I gave you. That's the only paper that I had. Yeah, because right now I'm up in... I have no idea. Yeah, I, there was just that one paper, Pat, I think. And it was just, I think, for record keeping to have. Because uh, we don't... One year to complete from seven one of this year. No, I'm gonna. I'll, I'll be in talk with okay. her. I'm gonna think that it's we have one year once the materials are on site. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. Okay, that I makes sense. Sure. Yeah. And do we have to send them notification that we've hung them all mm -hmm. at the end of the year? Yeah. And then they randomly select townships, and then they'll come out and look. Do an inspection. Do just to make sure that they're placed at proper height, proper distance. So they, you know, they're not going to get to everybody, mm -hmm. but there is a chance that you know they would, would hit the lottery and they would come and inspect our signs on what we did. So what are we going to do with the old ones? Well, a lot of them will be new signs. There'll be some replacement signs too. Um, the older ones that we take down. Um, well, when I, when the last time I did one, the power got big enough was it to, to the scrap here. Um, we got, you know, for scrap aluminum. Yeah. When we, uh, that time I had the roll off box and we mm -hmm. scrapped a bunch of pipe and stuff. And, um, we said we'd pick up a load of uh, aluminum and put it That's part of that money. Because this is just signs, not posts. No, it's post, post everything. Hardware and signs. So the complete unit, so to speak. Yep. Outfit. Mm -hmm. okay. So if we have a post in the ground, we have to remove it and put their post in? <coughs> a lot of them we probably will because some of the signs are uh, a bigger size. And they're big out of my signs. Post instead of the painted the green like that we have out now. Mm -hmm. yeah, and the other issue we're going to have to look at because if my memory serves me right, we were about 500 folks. That's a lot of hand pounding. <coughs> you may want to look at whether it was a piece of wood and borrowing one, renting one, a post pounder. Mm -hmm. Maybe the hydraulic ones. Because that's an awful lot of science to be putting them up by hand. Once they're all up, you know, yeah, we, it's a different story. Mm -hmm. So we may have to look at that at some point. Well, we're going to have a lot of scrap then. 
up into the far <laughs> world. So that was good news, though, that we got that. So and when I get, if I contact her, or she contacts me, I'll let you know if there's anything. But I don't think there's going to be too much to do, really. Okay, that's great. I think most of it, I think most of the lake work's been done. And what they did and I did as far as... No, I don't remember if the money goes through the books or not. I don't remember that. I never do how that letter read that. Or if they do that on their, you know, on their end. And I thought they took care of it. We just got the stuff. That'd be great. Yeah, I think that's what you said. I know. Good. Next, on the 1st of May, I received an email from ODOT about participating in the winter salt contract. They don't quit, do they? I haven't received a fly back from the <laughs> summer fill. <laughs> the summer fill was supposed to be opened on the 5th, which would have been this past Tuesday, but I haven't heard anything. Um, which, if you remember, we put down we would take 200 tons for the summer fill. Um, the winter contract is due by the 18th, which is of this month. Of this month. Which is before our next meeting. So how much do you think we have here? I think we should go with 200 on the winter fill also. We average about 380 to 400 tons per season. Um, so if we get to, we get to 200 through the summer, and then we take 200 through the winter, I think that would put us in good shape. Because our capacity is what? It can hold about 250 of pure salt in that one bay there. And started mixing it up, and I'm just going to go ahead and fill with the mix, and that will pretty well empty that. So the summer fill will fit in there, I can get it all here. And then I'll have the 200 to use through. So we'll be at 250 roughly. Yeah. Plus all the mix and the 200 more come. Yeah. Is that what you guys want to do? Well, no. So you need a. Well, I don't know what. Is it the same deal as before? We don't have to do that. No, I can use that same. Contract. And not contract, but. Yeah, uh, I mean, you guys just need to do. As far as passing the okay for, but as far I don't need the um, uh, resolution to send it. Because it worked for both. Correct. So we just need to approve. I just what have to attach it again, but that's all. Then I just fill right. out online. You need a motion to approve that fact? Yes. Uh -huh. So moved. Second. Let me get a number here. The winter's the same again, Barry. It's the 90 and not 110 percentage. Okay, we feel the same as some, right? 200 tons. Yes. Mr. Helm? Yes. Mr. Minor? <coughs> yes. Mr. Garwood? Yes. Five thousand for 
Is it two pipelines? <coughs> yes, we're pipelines. He will. <laughs> Clara, you going to make that motion? So I move resolution. Second. I'll second that. Unless you have somebody else to second that. I could do it, but we'll be the <laughs> same. <laughs> yep. Yeah. <clears throat> Mr. Hum? Yes. Mr. Garwood? Yes. I'll say that. Right. I was trying to think of what that word was. <laughs> Bathroom break. Yeah, right. <laughs> okay, that was for resolution PO number 15, resolution number 49. Seems how we did about 15 last meeting. Number? Resolution number? No, PO number. 15. Okay. And. 2006, the oil pan is rusted out on it again. Um, these steel oil pans are $750 to replace them. Steel, and did you say? Steel, just regular mm -hmm. oil pan. Uh, I did some research and had a guy check for me because I found them online. Point Springs can get me a stainless steel one. Uh, they're $1,000, but once it's done, it's done. The 2000, you know, on average, we get about four to five years out of these oil pans. For whatever it is. No matter, no matter what we paint them with, we just can't get them to last. Um, so anyway, the 2006 you figure is going to be around here for about 10 more years. That'd be this time and probably at least one more. Uh, so you're looking, you know, $750. Was for who? For the steel one, but then I can get a stainless mm -hmm. for about a thousand. I would really like to try that to see. If I'd be curious if it lasts longer. Well, it should. I mean, it should. Stainless steel. That's a crazy question, but eh? well, we always look home and put oil on stuff to keep it from rusting. <laughs> they must rust from the outside. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you need a motion pad, I'll move it. Yeah, just one minute, Carl. You brought this on the state when you bury it. It's just an ongoing battle. Oh. And who was this from? It would be for Point Spring. Oh, we dealt with them. Yeah, we have a cattle of them, right? That's why I found it online, but then mm -hmm. uh, the way to purchase it, so I had him look and see if he, anybody he dealt with could, could get it. So. Okay, so what we're looking at is um, a purchase order of $1,000 for Point Springs to so Mel can order a new oil pan for the 2006 truck. Right, stainless steel. Yeah. Oh, I had that written. I just didn't tell you that. I want to make that a motion, please. So moved. Second. Mr. Hunt. Yes. Mr. Miner. Yes. Mr. Garwin. Yes. Okay. It's, it's stainless for us, too. Depending on the grade of it, yeah. there's a lot of different grades of stainless. <coughs> so, I want to try it. The steel pans you're putting on, do you know where they're made? Any chance? I don't. So they could be stamped anywhere. Just doesn't seem like you can get them to last. Like I said, we've tried repaint, you know, scuffing them down and repainting them. We've tried all different kinds of things to try to make them last longer. And about five years since we messed with them out. Mm -hmm. Even if you see, oh, it's starting to rust a little bit, try to retouch it up with paint and just can't get them to last. The only other thing I thought about was like spraying them with like a bed liner or something yeah. like that. But I'm not have that kind of money in it. By the time you figure the time and spray it in, they're going to have that kind of money in it anyway. I think that's a good idea. <laughs> that's a good idea. <laughs> no. Yeah. Two 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 ideas, steel. Yeah. Let's see what happens. Um, and then that's the only thing I have except for what you want me to print out, Barry. You want, okay. you want that now? Or yeah. Want yeah, you might as well just go ahead and give it to all three of us. Along this line, Mary had emailed this to me and uh, wanted to print this out for you guys. These emails. Um, 
to print this one out. I was having trouble making our computer read it. So I am going to have to do something about getting that computer upgraded. Because we got that other one that we had to rock in your house from the time before. I'm going to have Daryl work on that to get a newer version of Word because the one here was read. I had to read it at home. Our work is it? What do we do? Oh, that's sad. You have me a little something. Oh, you didn't use that. I know, I know. I don't get that. I felt important for a second. You had a copy for Pat? Yes, I did. You gave me that look like you were being locked out. I I, I I probably had my hands on it. Pat, I wouldn't I did. You know what? I've got enough paper. I don't
get? Do they do anything like that for us or not? All I know is that there is that uh, government, it's called government solutions or something like that, that the school buys all their stuff through. Yeah, and that was my next. Did you get a lot better price than this? Mm -hmm. Can we get through them? Yeah. Maybe that's where I heard. And that's where, again, I'm willing to help. I feel like I always throw Mel, like, you do it now, but he turns out he's got a really good IT guy in his family. And he's on retainer here. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like I would be more comfortable if someone a little smarter than me picked out. You know, I can I can do household computers, but what we're going to need, I don't know. Well, I just want to make sure that whatever we decide on serves your needs. Right, and for a good few years, we don't want something that you know. Yeah. I'm not big on upgrading every two years. I don't care what the Best Buy thinks you're supposed to do. I tend to put on the things for a while. So. So is that all right with you guys if they go check it out and then come back to us? Yes, well, we've been discussing this for a little bit. So well, yes. money-wise, we're not talking about yeah. money, no. the way things are nowadays. No, but that would say we really probably need like internet, you know, email, downloads, Adobe, and word processing. We're not doing photographics and, mm -hmm. you know, it's the, the computer I use at home because I take so many photos is actually really powerful. That would not be something we need here. Sony pictures don't require all that, I don't think. Okay. And then we can start getting rid of the old. Do we still have our computer graveyard over there in the corner? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Next time, uh, Daryl holds a electronics drop off over there at the school. Yeah. Uh, when that time comes, I'll talk to you guys about computers and fax machines and cell phones. We have a collection. Mm -hmm. Well, they're probably collectible. <laughs> I know, we should probably <laughs> check with the Smithsonian. Yeah, they're probably at Robert Minehouse. I think I just brought one from your house. You did, and I think there's another. I saw an ad for someone recently had that, and I got all excited and almost forwarded it to Mel, and then the disclaimers at the bottom is that they did not accept computer monitors at all. And I'm like, that's what we want to get rid of. Yeah. Those things are like kind of, you know. Special. There's that. <laughs> Well, if you two can do that, then we'll get back to it. Right. Your report. I don't have a whole lot. It's business as usual. Picking up. Um, I do have it to print. I apologize. I was late. I went to prom tux pickup in Boardman, and who knew that takes two hours? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you laughed because you had a son. I know. I know. Um, so I do apologize. But um, I'll print it and hand it out afterwards. But really nothing. Just everything's picking up. We did have a few alleged violations I sent notices out to, and so far I've had good response. You know, which is what we want. We let them know that there's a problem, and they call and say, "Oh, I didn't know," and let me see what I can do to make that right. And um, I think we're allowed to. Add. Mr. Whistler, I did get a hold of him finally. Oh, okay. Yeah, and he's. You know, again, we're just telling him to let me know, and he's not forwarded any of the information yet. But I did want to let you know that I did touch base with him, so he's fine. I know Mel attempted to, I think, and didn't get him. And I let him know that Mel had tried to contact him as well. So. Well, he said he had photos on his phone. So. Yeah, he's trying to figure out how to send them. Oh. <laughs> need them. Maybe he just needs to come here and meet with you. That's what I said. We'll do it old school. Just come on in. <laughs> So he's going to get back to me. And that's what we like to tell people is keep track, keep dates, take photos, and tell us what's going on. And we'll so that should have the data <coughs> going on. Yeah, that's what's <coughs> nice. It's pretty much in the data. You know, when you pull it into, I know like Picasso will show you exactly when a photo was taken. So that should be, you know, it's not resolved yet, but we have made contact with him and he was satisfied that we were serving his needs. So that's it for me. Carl! Nothing. Everything is fine. Sir, sure. that's the best you can do. The best you can do. <laughs> Barry. Hey, uh, get some stuff. I about the cemeteries. Been spending quite a bit of time out in cemeteries, doing some spring cleaning, and just actually going out and looking at condition and the inventory that we have. Uh, you know, six cemeteries. I think in, in looking at what's out there, we should start. Look, we should have some discussion as to how we can get into a maintenance program with some of the repair of the headstones and, and the leveling of the headstones. And, and actually, the ground itself needs a lot of fill dirt, leveling, and reseeding, which would be a fall project. Uh, if you look at, you know, like Esterly. There's 
two broken, six base repair, and three leaning. And, and what I mean by the base repair, it's actually the, the foundation has totally, it's cracked or it's a total upheaval. Uh, so, and, you know, East Fairfield, you know, there's quite a bit. You know, there's 22 broken, 55 base repair, and 57 leaning. And I walked it all. Gee. I was tired when I was done. But there's there's just there's there's some work out there that needs to be done, and I happen to run on uh, our cemetery sexton, Mike, Sunday down in Surfield, and I just was talking to him about you know we've got some of these issues with with the headstones, with what he may be interested in, maybe taking on another role in maintaining some of these, or would we be better off as a board? Because I have had communication with Richardson Monuments. Uh, and they set somebody up and we kind of looked at them and they're able to do that type of work also. Uh, but I just think we need to start a discussion to see how we want to go about it. Well, why don't we get Mike in here and have a short executive session mm -hmm. and just kind of have him check everything out first and let's see if he has the time because he works in an hour right. and that he may not have the time right. because the fellow that we used to hire didn't did he pass away yeah I, I i believe so at least i know it's not there and the other gentleman that i had yeah. here he did go to see him right. he's not interested because i tried to run some people what about a year yeah. or two ago and i yeah. just ran dead end and i've had a little bit of time here lately and uh, i just uh, they're making some phone calls and Spent some time cleaning them all up, and it's just time to. I can't take all the credit because the twins, Josh Story and Jacob Story, were out there helping me a little bit too. Yeah, so I can't take all the credit. I'd call them and say, hey, "Come help." What are you, three and four years old or something? No, <laughs> I'm just 16. kidding. It wasn't I'm cheap on my wallet either. <laughs> you didn't have to eat them. <laughs> Josh and who? Joshua and Jacob Story. Yeah. Come on. But if Mike would look this over, because he spends the most time, uh, let's see if he's interested in what type of uh, financial arrangement sure. we can make with that that he thinks fair. Because you know, I, 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 we just need to start kind of like a maintenance program, whether it would be monthly, okay, you do any repairs that month, and there's no payment. So I, I, I'll get Mike in here when it's good for him, and we can sit down and discuss it. So. Well, we used to if have it's, a maintenance program. If it's too involved, it'll probably it. take money from general or something. But well, that's yeah. At least to get caught back up again. Yeah. Just exactly to get caught back up, and then we could, you know. There's never been much done since I. Well, no, that guy. We, we did. We yes, we, we did. We had a contract with him, yes, and everything was fine. But that's been yeah. ten years. <coughs> ago. At, at least. The last at least. Ten. Three or four years ago, we did. I trimmed a bunch of trees down there. Because everything, some of the trees were planted and then they were on the way out. Right. How many did we move a lot of limbs and trees down there? About and three, 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 yeah, quite a bit. Three or four years ago now. Then just looking at some of our asphalt pavement, you know, we have that little section of Kirk Mill. Yep. Get this piece of Kelly Park. What was the first one? Kirk. Well, we're having some of this activity, you know, because really it's no fill repair. Fill it out, fill it back in. What does the board think about maybe trying to get a cubic third price from whether it could be state line? If they're in the township working and maybe go out and do some of these repairs, because Kirk's really starting to show some wear. I was surprised when I was across it the other day. You're speaking about repairing the road? Yes. The hot mix on it, it's, it's gotten really... This past winter was hot. Yeah, it dried right out pretty bad. There's a lot of traffic on that road. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. It's a shortcut. Yeah, yeah. A, lot, a lot of running back between those two schools there. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I could solicit and see what a cubic yard price would be, and then we could go out and measure up and see where we would be, and we'd have to stay within the force account limits. But I'm sure with all the amount of work that's out there, we would be all right, but we'd have to check that. Mm -hmm. uh, 
I forget, what is Oregon been almost that stuff? 25? 50. 50. They yeah, increased it? Yeah, they, they, they increased it, Pat. So I think we're up at 50 now. I would double check with Irvin, but. I'm pretty sure. I knew they changed it. But I, I'm just afraid if we go too much longer, then it's going to. Something that probably needs to be done this year with that piece of crook. Yes, I agree. So I was a couple, you know, in that process, I think I'm last. <laughs> From last year, but it wasn't looking good. So you're discussing Kirk and Kelly Park. Yeah. So we'll, I'll, I'll get a whole state line since they're going to be in the township, and whether they'll be back after the frack or whatever, and mm -hmm. if not, then you know maybe we can contact. You know, we'll definitely have to have somebody that pays for railing wage to work on the township roads. You so want a motion to that effect, Pat? When he's done doing whatever yeah. there, um, yes. We don't need it yet. So we have a <coughs> prevailing wage rate on, on the job. So we have to see what contractors in with. It'd be nice if we could get a communication who's going to be around here so they just don't mow in for a small amount and we get a big mobilization charge. Right. And as you can see, this one, they neither one said bid on them. Are you done? Yeah, a couple of things to look back up. Well, Pat, you want to wait for Mary to finish? Huh? Yes, I, I'm I might sorry. be a little bit with the next section. Go ahead. All right. Okay. What, what is it? 745? <laughs> we did receive two bids for the re bidding for the hauling of road materials. And Wilson trucking and these envelopes neither one was marked and I, I cut the first one open and the second one I didn't because it came blank too so it didn't say that it was a bid but um, Ed Wilson tell me what you got there babe. okay Ed Wilson um, from Mango Junction seven dollars from Lafarge and Warren five dollars Five dollars, okay. From Lafarge in Cleveland, ten twenty-five. Junction, eight dollars. From Warren, five twenty-five. And from Cleveland, ten twenty-five. Yeah, that was ten twenty-five. Also, yes. Okay. And that is the only two that we did receive. <coughs> you want to do? Do you just want to accept them all? Well, we normally accept them all, but it would be subject that there's no findings of recovery. Did we do that last time? We did it, did For Findings of recovery. No. Um, I, don't, I don't, can't remember. Was that talking? I don't think I have them. I gave you the ones for the materials. Yes, materials. I have that, but I meant for this we didn't do that, did we? I don't think I have Because we didn't have any. Thing. Do you need this approved before next meeting? Are you 
you want to call that to call something? No. Okay, well then we can approve it next meeting then if that's okay. No, because I want to put a pencil or anything to see who and material wise and I want to be quiet. Okay. Because then, then I'll get a feel for material and for trucking. So I'm not prepared to. So we're just you, going to. If you want to wait and do it then, mm -hmm. I can get the findings for recovery. Well, then we need the findings for recovery and we'll um, act on the next meeting. Yeah, that's what we <coughs> And that is May the 21st. Statewide paving, you're talking about. Because they're going to be there. If they're going to start tomorrow, we're going to go tomorrow. We're going to measure that up and get an idea of what's going on. You're going to get a bid from them? Is that what you're going to do? Yeah. Uh, and I went to the fire department the other night. More like a quote. Not the quote, not the Yeah. <coughs> went to the fire department the other night and just wanted to thank them for their. You know what they do for us out here in the township. And the whole thanks for holding their bill down for us. Columbia. Yeah. Columbia. Yeah. Uh, dry hydrants. We talked about some dry hydrants. We might try to get a few more dry hydrant mm -hmm. locations. I said, you know, now you know that somebody down at Crestview and Lower Alton Road's got a farm set in there. Uh, the 558 on the south side of the road. Those are still two ponds there. Uh, so we're going to be some discussion maybe. Gary and whoever else, and yourself and whoever else wants to be involved, and we'll see if we can maybe get a couple more. Okay. As far as that goes. So. The Melman crash analysis for us here at 64. And I've got, you know, one thing, in light of this issue about it, We'll stay around 164 and that's what you wrote. You know, as far as township trustee, I've always tried to make fast fact-based decisions regarding all the issues. It seems there's been a lot of conversation about the whole project out there. There has been excellent comments. We've held our public hearing. But there hasn't been a lot of fact. Some of the stuff that I have, I'm going to go through real quick, and it's just kind of fact. Do you have something to give me that I don't have to arrange so fast? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you got it. Oh, I have it? No. Okay. Yeah. No, I'll give it to you. Sure, you did. Yeah, I'm going to. Hold this one right here. I got it. Yeah, there was two documents. There's that, and there's this email. And the email. Have mm -hmm. you buried it? Sorry, just a minute, guys. Right here. Well, I'm waiting there for a second. I didn't mean to say guys. I uh, gave the key to the police department for the house next door. Matthew, he called me and come out and met with me and put him over and checked to him and gave him the key so that he said he'd probably be over the And I did tell uh, Corals next door in case they saw something going on in there. They wouldn't <laughs> call the police. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's good. <laughs> you know, there's been a lot of discussion about traffic studies, the intersection being unsafe, and we had a meeting when this project early, early on started, uh, Greg Gurney from the LPA 
you know, simply stated in that meeting and there's minutes to that effect that, you know, the traffic and the increase in that intersection would not warrant at this point in time any physical activity as far as studies. Then on January 22nd of 14, ODOT come out again and looked at the intersection. And it was in the middle of January. But there was four engineers from ODOT that do this for a living every day. You know, intersection site distance is adequate. What we did with this information is I didn't feel that the intersection was adequate. And that's why we work with ORDC and we work with Norfolk Southern to try to upgrade and widen the intersection even more than it was today. Uh, and we had an estimate prepared by the county engineer. 43,000. Our quote was for 58.7, which we had that money secured. Had right away from on January 31st to 14th to look at all the right away out of 164. If you look at the intersection itself, we've discussed the west side. The west side is where the $58,700 was going to go to widen it out from 24 feet to 44 feet. Barry, let me ask you this. Do you have any of this written down that I don't have to take all that? Energy? I can. Uh, I'm going off basically these emails, Pat. Chronological order. Of emails. Because I can't, I can't understand you on my tape. Do you think it's really hard to, to get what you're saying? I will sit down after the meeting and, and write something, Pat. Now, we had a right away sent from District 11. So on the eastern side, there was never any discussion about the eastern side. We had $116,000, $116,200. was going to go to the west side. The township would have received $47,500 that we could have used for a safety project within the township. My thinking in that, and has always been, is the eastern side of the intersection has a oodles of right of way. If, in fact, that intersection wouldn't have functioned properly. We could have went to the east side and spent another $40,000. So the money was in place to do that. That intersection would have been one of the wider intersections in Columbia County. Uh, Is that Estuary Drive? Yes, sir. So if, if you look, and all of the factual documentation that we have, it is all there. Uh, my concern is the PUCO permits the closure for Norfolk Seven. Where is the township going to come up with that money to do these intersection improvements? Because that was my yes vote, was for the $116,000 to enable the improvement of the intersection. That's the conversation that we need to be having. What happens if PUCO closes that? How are we going to react to that intersection? Because we were told that incentive money is off the table. And we were told that December 12th of 13th at the public hearing. Tell me so out there which intersection you're speaking about. Stay Route 164 and Esther Lane Okay. Route. So if you look at all of the information that's compiled, and I won't continue on because I've got email after email after email where we started with traffic counts. We got traffic counts from the OSOPs. We got traffic counts from the county. The township did traffic counts left, right turn. And we're all given to ODOT. Still didn't feel that there's an issue. So knowing that intersection and being in the business that I have been for 33 years, 
One thing we didn't have is a crash analysis. I have a crash analysis too. In fact, you have this back. In, in the disk? Yes. Okay. It says the following is an analysis crash report data of the intersection of State Route 164 and Esterly Drive in Columbia County. The analysis uses data from ODOT's geographic crash an analysis tool from 2009 to 2014 to analyze crash patterns that have happened within a 250 foot radius of this intersection. This analysis shows that high frequencies of crashes do not occur at this intersection, nor are the crashes that have occurred severe with respect to in instances of personal injury or fatality. <coughs> According to the GCAT data, three crashes, three, have occurred at this intersection from 2009 to 2014. All of the crashes were property damage crashes, indicating that each crash was not severe enough to have reported injuries or fatalities. Additionally, only one crash was reported to have occurred at the intersection. Two of the three crashes occurred while the driver was maintaining a straight course. The contributing factors indicate that no one crash pattern existed among these crashes. This is something that... Is that all in here? Yes. This is something that, you know, we, we have. ODOT knew this intersection. I knew this intersection as a township trustee. There is not the crashes and the unsafeness that has been characterized in that intersection. It's just factually not there. Where, where is that intersection at? 164 and 344, Carl. It's specially ceramics at the old Franklin Furniture Building. So, you know, I, I, I just, through this whole thing, you know, you have to make fact-based decisions being in a leadership role. And I have always done that as a trustee. And the facts are here. That's all I have, Carl. Okay. Do you have Casey's facts over here? Yeah. And then there's those emails that Mel printed too that I just forwarded to the township email. Okay. Yes. This is for you. This is mine? That's yours. I just have, well, it's just one subject. Let's see. Esterly Drive is coming back to the forefront. But that entire area out there now seems to be, I don't know, state of flux, future development, growth, whatever. There's a lot of potential out there. So the first call I received was from Mark Hudson. And there's a possibility, maybe a probability, that part of that area out there is going to be developed by an outside interest. And they're looking at quite a bit of property out in that area. So there's annexation rumors going around where, I don't know if the annexation is going to go towards Latonia or if the annexation is going to come towards Columbia. So that rumor has started again. But there's a lot of homework being done to develop that area out there. So I don't know where that's going. My second call was from Scott Farkas from PUCO called me. F-A-R-C-U-S? F-A-R-K-A-S. K-A-S. And I just happened to be in the office when he called, not in court. He is not the hearing officer, but he is a, I gather he was a supervisor down there. And we had an extensive, real nice conversation about that entire area, what went on out there. And like Barry, I talked to 
Scott about the un unintended consequences when we close the crossing, what it does to everything around there. And he assured me that those issues were going to be addressed in the hearing. Now, he didn't tell me how they were going to be addressed, but they're, they're going to be addressed because right now the crossing's open. The burden is on Norfolk, Suffolk? It's an N, N and S. It's upon the Norfolk Suffolk. Southern. The burden is upon the railroad to demonstrate um, that there's no need for so if they successfully do that, then the unintended consequences are on the tape. PUCO wants to know what's going on with that. So I'm, Scott assured me that those issues were going to be addressed at the hearing. Now it's my understanding that there's going to be a public hearing first, and then which would be in this area. First and, of June? No, we can't believe everything you agree. Oh, okay. And then there's going to be an evidentiary hearing at a later date. The PUCO set it for June the 8th. And that leads me to my next telephone call. Casey Teller called me. And I wasn't in the office, so I had called him back. And him and I spoke. June doesn't work for him at all. And he'd already talked with uh, someone at PUCO about coming up with several different dates in July, maybe the first part of August. So I told him we were going to have a meeting tonight, and he said, well, I'll call you Friday. <laughs> <laughs> but I think there's, I mean, where I'm going with all this, there's a lot of activity going out there. And if annexation is coming back, I mean, that's something that's been talked about for, I don't know, what, you're right. 50 well, years, I don't know. That, that area has always struck interest with industry. Right. And nobody has ever officially came and signed the dotted line, but you're mm -hmm. exactly right. That acreage is prime acreage for development, which I've said time and time again. You've got Route 11 there. I mean, it's just unbelievable the traffic that goes up and down there. So, it, it's just a matter of time that this is going to surface again. But they have to be able to connect the properties, and I don't know how they're going to do that, but that's Mark Hudson's responsibility. But also, there's different types of annexations now. And years ago, the annexation, if the land went in, the township lost the tax revenue. That's the way previous annexations were. Well, they're talking about a different type of annexation whereby the tax revenue stays with the township. Mm -hmm. So this thing's got a lot of multi-issues here. And I, I think when I was done talking with uh, the PUCO, uh, the suggestion was made that we need to get more involved and file what they call a motion to intervene so that we get all the hearing dates that everything is sent to our representative or to the township, however. And we've all heard about what was going on with Mrs. Clinton and her uh, emails and that. People get angry with me that I won't give them my email. And I do that intentionally because I don't want to co-mingle <coughs> my you know, sunshine uh, rules with my private practice because my clients wouldn't appreciate it. So I can't go through and delete things with personal, with business, with township. So I just don't give it out. It's unlisted, and some of them don't like that. But in any event, I, I think this is becoming more complicated. I think we need to get Alan Langer involved, because he's been involved previously with the annexation issues that we've had in the township. I just think we need to formally uh, do a resolution that that's what we want him to handle it. Uh, he may have some potential conflicts if there's issue, if certain issues go one way or another, but we need somebody to represent us on all this, to look at the big picture. Because we got uh, 
suggestion to the board and that what I'd like to be able to do is tell Casey that uh, we've gotten our township council involved and he needs to talk with Alan and then Alan can fill us in on what's going on. Do you need a motion to that effect? Well, if that's what you guys want to do, I just think it's prudent. And, and I'm in agreement, you know, we, we have Alan every year we have him for our new council. I think as long as we are providing him all the documentation that we have and, and the information that we have and we are involved in that process, Bob, I think it is a good idea because there has always been activity out in that area and hopefully someday we will be able to have more industry out there. Well, that area is one of the reasons why Columbiana stopped uh, extending their utilities Correct. without annexation. Correct. <laughs> So if that's what you guys want to do, yeah, we need a... I'll, I'll move the motion, Pat. And I'll second that. Okay, tell me how you want it written, please. Well, no, we're going to... Hire. Hire Alan to uh, take care of this, uh, I guess, the old Kaiser plant area. Is that what it will say? It would be the railroad crossing, annexation issues, okay, uh, cross intersection issues, whatever. Annex annexation? Annexation and what else? Railroad, railroad crossing, annexation? An intersection. And, any, and anything else that... Well, we covered so much of that in our minutes. Right. This, you know, and then looking back at all of this, and, and where a lot of this okay. information I think yeah. has been forgotten or lost, or, or you know, on my part forgotten. I mean, this started back in 2012. Well, yeah. And we're in 15 now. I mean, there's a lot of information out there. And I don't think it's going to be that hard to digest. I mean, all you gotta do is read the minutes and that, and you get the basic skills yes. things and go you from mean there. from all the hearings and things. Yeah, because we vented it. We had basically two public hearings that like, was vented. So. And when I did those, they pretty much were exactly as they were you, told that night. You know. Your minutes well, excellent. As I sit back and I look at all this from 2012, which has taken a lot of time, this process, I believe, has worked. We had our public hearing. The public and the community spoke. We had the vote. Now we have the PECO process where there still is comments able to go on. Mm -hmm. So the process has been working. Now, is everybody going to be happy at the end of the day? I don't know that. I don't know that. But at the same time, it has been a process that has worked, and, and, and I said it that night. It was very nice to sit in a room and discuss an issue that is contentious for some, and get along and discuss the issue. It was. There's a lot of places where you can't do that. Correct. Um, I think we are unique out here. Yes, we are. Okay. okay, Carl made the motion to hire Alan Weir to take care of the, whatever, as you named it, um, anything that comes up regarding that Estuary Drive 164 area, right? Is that okay? Right.
Do I have a second? Second. Mr. Holmes? Yes. Mr. Miner? Yes. Mr. Garwood? Yes. Okay, let me get it. Now, what's nice about this is if, if something's coming up, Alan can come to our meetings and we can discuss it. The pending litigation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and I think it would be nice if we could come next meeting and we could kind of lay out expectations and what our thoughts are. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm gonna. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hook up Casey and him tomorrow. Okay. And let them kind of. I guess get acquainted, and then we can go from there. Casey and who? Alan, Alan and Casey. Mm -hmm. Because once the PO's CO sets all the dates, then that can all be relayed to us, and we can put it on the website. I don't want anybody saying they missed dates. Okay, well, that's, I think that's all I am. There I am. <laughs> well, it's been a survey today, as usual. And I will admit our neighborhood is uh, becoming all of a sudden a very interesting area. We hear rumors every day, but we do. Just kind of wait to see what happens. I don't know. Yeah, no. Sure. The barber shop talk and yeah, whatever. Oh gosh, <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. been crazy. <laughs> been a lot of talk, Mary. Been a lot of talk. And you know, some of this stuff isn't to be disclosed, but they're talking about it at the post office. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's like, where are you guys get this stuff? <laughs> yeah. Oh well, it's interesting times are coming. Well, Anything else from anybody? Mm -hmm. okay. Motion to adjourn. Is it going to rain? Sorry. Is it going to rain? It's supposed to cloud out. It's not supposed to. Isn't it? Mm. Did you vote on that, the higher one? Yeah. Yes.